Apple is known for its sleek and innovative web designs, and it's established itself as a leader in the web design space. Now, I've designed some of the websites and landing pages for Apple.com, and I've learned some of their trade secrets when it comes to web design. So I wanna share Apple's top five web design principles with you so that you can design websites like Apple does. All right, the first design principle that Apple is so well known for is their confident and their prevalent use of white space. So much to the point where if somebody tells you to clean it up or make it breathe, a lot of times you'll hear them say, can you just make it a little bit more Apple-y? If you look at any one of Apple's websites here, I'm on the iMac page. Yes, they have images. Yes, they have grids, but check out this spot where they just embrace and apply drastic amounts of white space, hyper-focusing on little pieces of text and gorgeous shots of their products. Here's another example on the AirPods Max page. We're getting a giant big imagery or video. We even have here typographic kind of layouts. We have giant commitment here to white space so you can really focus. The second design principle that Apple is committed to and that you should be as well is what they refer to as marketing moments. These are these large moments, impressive moments that are purely there to emphasize the point of the site. In their case, it is to sell. When we reload the AirPods Max website, we get this nice marketing moment. It's a smooth transition a little bit of animation. And you know, you might say, hey, get me to the content, get me to the price. But Apple says, slow down. Let's just give you an experience. Also, as you scroll down through these areas, you're gonna find more of these marketing moments. We're now marketing and focusing on these fun little moments where we're showing features and highlighting certain aspects. And so building out some of these fun little marketing moments is crucial. Like the third principle that Apple is a really big fan of is video and movement, not overusing it, but using it for a specific purpose to keep your interest and continue to move you down the page. And so when there starts to become a time when there's been maybe a lot of text, a lot of information, they're going to immediately implant some sort of video or movement of some kind to keep your interest peaked. We can see the iMac page here. We get that beautiful marketing moment. It makes me really, really interested, right? My iMacs are moving in and I'm starting to read a lot. I'm starting to get a lot of stuff, just small little bits of movement, small pieces of video. Okay, now I'll get some static images, static images. Oh, there's some more movement, doing a little bit of scroll hijacking, a little bit of animation here. The fourth design principle that Apple is huge on is slightly connected to the last point of video and animation, but it's how you use video and animation. Not only should it be there to pique interest, but it's also there to help you tell the story or build a narrative experience. Here's an example. We're back on the AirPods Max page. And as I scroll down, we get some of that beautiful video, but my text is starting to tell a little bit of a story. So this is kind of combining all of these principles in one. We want to have this big white space area, these large marketing moments that are gorgeous. We also want to have video and movement, but look, we are telling a story, not only with the video, but the video is adding to it. Same thing here. We're going to use movement to kind of move you in and engage you. And look, we're starting to tell a story about the build of the headphones, the arms of the headphones. So we're telling a story of value here. Now we're going to move into some static images and then on to that rotating piece, right? And it's all about the digital crown. So this isn't just video and shapes and cool 3D stuff for the sake of design. All of it is built to actually create a narrative story that you can walk away as a customer fully understanding. The last design principle that Apple are huge advocates of revolve around layouts. All layouts discussed and designed at Apple have to be two things. They have to be structured, but they have to be exploratory. So they can't just be reusing and rehashing the same old things. They want to add some moments of interest into their layouts. Here's some great examples. Again, we're back here in the uh, AirPods Max website, we get these beautiful centered images and it almost feels like our text is sporadically placed around it. It's technically on a grid. We're just being a little bit experimental with our layout. The same thing goes with our image layouts that we have here. We have these almost like masonry grids. They are staggered. They're not perfectly defined, but look how we have beautiful space. We have gutters and margins and paddings. Well, there you have it. Those are five of the most important design principles that Apple impressed upon me while I worked with them building out websites and landing pages. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you know when more videos on web design like this one 
come out. And also, why don't you check out one of these videos about web design, and I'll see you in the next one.